Okay, I had a viewer ask me to do a video and explain in detail the difference between rotor, mechanical turbulence, and wind shadow. So, well, let me demonstrate. <laughs> I'll just fly right through all of them. Yeah! Who gives a crap about any of them if you got super skills and a dominator? It's like whoop de doo Okay, so the air spilling over the top of a mountain that's then curling around like water falling off of a waterfall, that would be rotor. You can get air going down and actually up and circling and curling like a washing machine. That would be rotor. And yeah, it could be quite turbulent. Mechanical turbulence is like the air coming around the sides of that tree. That would be creating mechanical turbulence. But in fact, it's also a rotor. It's just like a sideways rotor. So rotor, mechanical turbulence, the same dang thing. Uh, it's basically the same thing. Eddies is another thing they call like eddies in the water. It's just like getting eddies in the air. Now wind shadow, let's say you have a tall building. Well, the air spilling over the top of the building is going to create rotor up near the top quarter to third of the building. But at the base of the building, it's going to be blocking the wind and you're going to be in wind shadow. So if you flew close to the building, right behind it, and it was a really, really long building, you could have actually fairly smooth air because you would be down below the rotor. Or let's say you dropped into a canyon that was fairly, fairly narrow and quite deep. As you drop below the lip of the canyon, the air spilling over the top of the canyon is going to be creating rotor. But once you get to the bottom of the canyon, you're going to have wind shadow at the bottom. So very commonly, you'll see me fly right down canyons and use that wind shadow where I drop completely to the bottom of the canyon. Now, this is not something that a new pilot should do or anyone should do without super training and a flat top and a dominator because there's so many little specifics to glider control with how to deal with it. Understanding what it is is one thing, but that doesn't do you any good if you don't have the ability to defeat it. Because thinking you're going to always avoid rotor and mechanical turbulence and wind shadow, it's not realistic. It's not going to happen. You're going to fly in places where you're going to at some point experience different types of turbulence like that. So you have to understand them to avoid the most severe and try and limit your exposure, but you also want to have the real actual super training and the best and safest gear. So when you get into crazy air, you just fly right through it. Who cares? Keep on going.